It's me, Josh. I don't need to know everything. I just need to know who to ask. So please take that away and run with that because that is the best advice I've ever been given and you can transcribe that to, to fit business, right? Hello and welcome back. If you hear a bird in the background, I apologize. I'm filming a little bit earlier today. Um, I think there's a nest in the front garden. We've got a lot of parrots here. I've been feeding them, so I've got no one to blame by myself. But today we're actually going to talk a little bit, well, a little bit, a little bit of everything actually. So hang around because I've got some uh, conspiracy theories. I've got a couple of other things I want to get off my mind. Give you a bit of an update in regards to the lava lamp. It's gone missing apparently, even though it's been delivered. Uh, so I'd be quite curious to see how that all plays out because that went from Australia to America. If you're a brand new reseller, if you've been reselling a little bit and you haven't turned on international shipping, it becomes more complicated because eBay treats that as two separate countries in the sense um, Australia may say yes and America may say no, so the no will always override it. So you're trying to appease two parties. Uh, so I will talk a little bit about that later as well. So I'm gonna flip the camera around really quickly. We're gonna talk a little bit about Skylanders. I know you love Skylanders. There's the board games, we're still got board games. All right, so I wanna talk about Skylanders today and pretty much copying business models of people you watch on YouTube, regardless if you like them or otherwise. Uh, so these are Skylanders, Spyro's Adventures by the Green Base, Giants, which I've got lots of, uh, Giants again, and we've also got Trap Team. And if you watch me on a Saturday night, I also stream uh, Swap Force, which is the blue ones. The reason why I wanna talk about Skylanders today is that I've been noticing a lot of people have been jumping on the Skylander train, and I don't necessarily <laughs> say I'm the reason behind that. Um, however, I've been accused of being the reason behind that. So we'll go with that, right? So what I want to do is talk about Skylander's, uh, you know, Spyro's Adventure, which these ones are. You will find these in the op shops. You'll find these in the thrift stores. And basically, because people like me talking about them, the thrift stores and, you know, people on Facebook Marketplace are marking them up exorbitant amounts, right? So what I want to give you a little bit of a... Um, an introduction to Skylanders. So I promote these at 15%, which is no secret um, from all these different things. I'll give you a hint. So pretty much what all the ones you can see in here, uh, so it's a very big tub. <laughs> it's almost, well, I suppose, three quarters away full. Majority of them are $1.99 plus postage, right? This is what I was saying with a variation listing, a variation listing, is that I would not list these products for $1.99. Uh, the reason why I do Skylanders for is because I come across them quite plentiful. I've got supply chains for them um, and it's just of me doing the hard yard straight up, taking a photo, then listing the quantity as they go from that perspective. Uh, out of all those ones, so probably uh, a little bag of 10, they range from probably $15 to $30 plus post. So it gives you kind of an idea of what, <laughs> what the ratio is uh, for actually Skylanders, right? So that's not to say all of them, it's just more of the rarer characters. This little chest down here, um, that's only in that bag for the sole purpose is because they're really tiny and I don't want them to fall to the bottom of the, <laughs> the pile, so if I have to go look for them. But generally speaking, 99.9% .9 of Skylanders, like I've said before, uh, including Giants, you can see the little bag there, which has probably got about 10 Giants in it. If you are looking for Giants, uh, the thing I've said before is that Scarlet and Ingenie, she's a variant, probably goes around that 15 or $20 plus postage. So very, 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 very select uh, Skylanders across all the themes. Like I've said before, they are so plentiful. These were mass marketed, mass produced, all these different things. So a lot of kids jumped onto them. So this is the reason why I wouldn't recommend um, <laughs> competing in a category that's already saturated. Um, and, you know, obviously buying these for 4 or $5 a piece from the thrift store only to find out uh, they're $1.99 plus postage. So I've had my diatribe with Skylanders. <laughs> so please, 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 please. If you want to do Skylanders, I do not care. This goes for clothing. This goes for all the different things that you see on YouTube. You know, music CDs. I personally got sucked into jeans that... Um, not to say that, you know, I should have done my research, but yeah, like I said, you get pretty excited. You jump back on the, on the train, the jean train as it was. Uh, now all my jeans are over there waiting to get shipped to Blake. So like I was saying is that you really, really, really need to do your research. I know I keep harping on about that. Grumpy granny rolls her eyes if you watch the podcast <laughs> when I go on my little diatribes. But, but please, 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 if you are doing it because of, you know, you want to generate extra income, um, you know, if you're doing it because you're obviously, you know, you really need this extra source of income to basically boost your paycheck and all these different things, please do your research. You know, I, I suppose, and I have said this previously, is that 
If I was to do $10, um, and this is what I would recommend to brand new resellers, do $50, do $10, do something along the lines of that. Do what's around your house, but basically start with $10, start with $50, whatever you can realistically afford to lose, thinking it as gambling. Um, but treat that $10, that $50 as the last $50 that's in your bank account, in your purse, whatever it is, uh, in your wallet, and quite possibly could be, right? So look at it from a, a, from a gambling perspective, because more often than not, that's what it is when you come to brand new to reselling, right? What I wanna do is I wanna move on to the lava lamp. So the lava lamp, which we discussed a couple of weeks ago, has arrived in its destination. Apparently it was not received. Um, this is kind of what annoys me a little bit about eBay is that people are very heavy handed to open up an item not received case. I don't know if eBay promotes this kind of behavior or otherwise, um, because generally what I would do is I would reach out to the seller and say, hey, look, my item hasn't arrived yet. Can you please you know, chase it up to me? Let me know what's going on from that perspective. If you send things untracked, you're out of luck. <laughs> so that's why I don't really recommend uh, sending things untracked. Um, we will talk a little bit about the green envelopes if I do remember it, but it's not on my list to talk about today. So this lava lamp um, arrived in its destination, was signed for, <laughs> and we'll get to that in a second, um, but miraculously it, it's disappeared. I'm basically, um, eBay hasn't locked my $700 worth of funds for that item yet, purely because I'm, I suppose, a strong seller in the sense of saying, hey, look, I've got you know, the metrics and probably the turnover. I'm not too sure how the, the algorithm works in that respect. However, if you're a brand new seller, you get an item not received case, there is a good chance that those funds are gonna be locked by eBay. Um, and likewise, if you don't have those funds in your account, they will probably drag it out of your bank account. So that's you need to be very mindful of. If you are a brand new seller uh, and looking at selling high ticket items, you know, such as iPhones and you know iPods and all these different things, $700 Skylanders. Just be very, very, very mindful is that if you do get an item not received case, it will you know, slow down sales, which it's done for me. It's literally killed them off since this thing landed. Uh, going back to this lava lamp thing, it was delivered. Um, I paid for insurance, which was, I said before, is that anything over $200 I normally pay for insurance because of the price of the item, I've actually done signature and delivery. So I paid the extra $15 to get insurance and I've also did the signature and delivery. So my first thing was to actually go back to the person that said, that, hey, it hasn't arrived. It's been marked as delivered, but I don't have it. Um, is to actually in, say, you need to go speak to your post office. I'm not too sure it's UPS or Postal Service or whatever, FedEx. I'm not too sure who actually carries it over from Australia Post over there. However, I've told them, you need to do this, right? re uploaded the tracking because it's already been delivered. <laughs> so I'm not too sure how eBay is going to play out with this one. Um, I'm quite nervous as to what I alluded in the start of the video. I've got a new camera. Actually, I'll show you a little bit later as well. I'm actually still using my phone. I'm using my AirPods. Uh, there is a reason for that, and I'll get to that in a second. <laughs> and I'll stop jumping around. Uh, so I'm a bit curious to see how this actually plays out in the sense of I'm probably out of luck from an insurance perspective because the item's been delivered. Um, the only way I could probably contest that is saying, hey, look, this item was delivered to Mr. Joe Smith, for example, um, and Joe Smith wasn't the one that signed for it. So potentially they could get the weasel their way out of that one as well. But the way it works from an international perspective, I suppose, from that perspective is that, perspective too many times, when we send things from Australia, uh, generally the receiving country's eBay takes carriage of it. So we would contact eBay Australia. We would say, hey, look, this item's disappeared. It's been marked as delivered. Can you please provide some guidance? So if it's in Australia, eBay would say, cool, you covered, it's been marked as delivered. You know, don't worry about it. It'll basically close in your favor. However, it's because it's international. It basically gets through eBay Australia. Then we get redirected to eBay US, depending on the time zone. They might actually leave a message for them. They might call you back, depending on what it is. It's very seldom it's actually happened to me. Then generally it will go, the decision will be made by the receiving country, country, right? So basically eBay US will be the one that makes the determination on this. And if this person kicks up a stink in regards to eBay US, because they're not affiliated with Australia or they they won't talk to me, <laughs> I suppose, you know, from that perspective, they will most likely find in favor of the buyer, even though it's been marked as delivered, um, and I'll be out of $700. And I can probably see it from having from that perspective. So I will keep you updated as to the, the plight of the lava lamp. <laughs> Realistically, I've lost $5 plus just say $100 postage on this thing. But that's 
I don't accept it from my perspective, right? So realistically, I will chase this down to the, the ends of the earth. Um, I will kick up a big stink with eBay in that respect. I can't do anything from an insurance point of view. Um, possibly nothing from an, Australia, uh, well, from an Australia Post or a UPS perspective. I don't know if that will go with that. Um, but that's realistically the latest on the lava lamp. I know I talked a little bit about that. We'll talk about the Skylanders. I want to talk about uh, eBay. So basically, if you've been living under a rock <laughs> or under a, a, a sea rock or coral for that matter, is that you probably heard in the UK they've basically been doing free fees for a lot of business sellers and a lot of you know, consumer sellers, I suppose, from that perspective. My theory, and I haven't heard this discussed, and I said it numerous times, I absorb so much content on YouTube, talk, listen, all these different things. So basically, I'm kind of love to get my thoughts around different opinions and different ideas, different perspectives and all these different things. So I listen to everyone regardless if I agree with them or they're not or I don't like them or otherwise, that's another matter. <laughs> However, with the, the free fees for the sellers and all these different things, I haven't heard anyone speak about this, but if you're a really, really, really small channel and I haven't watched you yet, you may have already and I apologize if I'm not saying it's my idea. However, I haven't heard it spoken about. What I honestly think they're gonna do as we already know, eBay is fleecing sellers with pro, uh, promoted listings. So we initially started as promoted listing standard, then we went to advanced, then we went through to offsite ads. Now we're up to promoting your store and promoting coupons and all this weird crap that's going on. So what they're going to do now, according well, according to Josh, is that they are going to make it free fees for sellers in the second sense. All right, so keep up with me. <laughs> They will charge a buyer's fee or a buyer's premium. Then 12 to 18 months, they will bring in a seller's fee again, right? So they'll be probably taking 10% from the buyer and eventually in 24 months, they'll start doing 10% from the buyer seller. So in addition to promoter listings, and they'll be getting 20%. So they'll be charging the buyer up front. They'll be charging the seller uh, for the seller's fees, which they've obviously disbanded at the stage because they're trying to capitalize on the market, right? So this is what I've talked about before is basically cornering the market, capitalizing the market, bringing everyone across from all these other platforms in Australia. We've only really got eBay, so we're not gonna see that free fees um, unless they try and roll it out to bring more people on the platform, then do it from that perspective. Like I was saying, is basically charge it from both sides, but I can honestly, honestly, honestly think this is what we're gonna be looking at at the 12 to 24 month thing. Put it, <laughs> tag, it, tag it long because I can guarantee you this is something they're probably looking at is where they basically, like I said, they charge the buyer's fee, maybe the 10% on, on the transaction, then they charge the seller's fee on the back end, plus the promoted listings, plus the postage and all these different things. That is the only logical perspective or the logical way forward for eBay from my perspective is because a lot of sellers on YouTube and a lot of sellers on Facebook market, Facebook marketplace, Facebook groups and all these different things have been talking about how eBay has been nickeling, diming us and all these different things and we're at the breaking point, right? So the best way around that is to get rid of the seller's fee, build the rapport back with sellers and say, hey, look, we've listened to you. Yes, we've done too many fees, we're sorry. Um, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna abolish seller's fees. I'll we'll probably put in a fine print for 12 months or something along the lines of that. Um, we're gonna introduce a buyer's fee and go from that perspective as a, as a thank you. They'll do marketing spin. They'll do some PR spin on it to make it sound like it's all warm and cuddly, promoting more sellers to flood to eBay than 12 to 24 months and I sold something. Oh, I saw the camera. Hopefully not the camera I'm planning on using. Um, and like I said, they'll, they'll migrate to that perspective where they cop, <laughs> they, they're taking it from the buyer. They're doing that in Australia. They already do that to some capacity. They've got a program called eBay Plus, which is very similar to Amazon Prime, but very, very no frills, uh, piss weak, watered down Amazon Plus. Basically you pay $5 a month to get free express postage, uh, which the sellers pay for <laughs> and you might get an extra two percent coupon if they're running a sale which the sellers pay for so be very very mindful of that um i'm gonna flip the camera around just show you my camera very quickly all right so i've moved the skylanders back so it's the same time there's theo everyone was a bit concerned about theo uh this is a jonathan thurston uh prototype indigenous shirt i don't want to say jersey i don't know what jerseys are so this is probably one of 10 or 15 that's probably in existence, um, picked it up on Facebook Marketplace for $80, got it listed for exorbitantly high. Uh, and my beloved vampire shirt, everyone knows that I've sold the clothing, got rid of the clothing. 
Um, I kept this for my personal. I meant to watch wear it on Halloween, but I forgot all about it. But it's there. <laughs> it's going there. So this is the camera I bought myself. It's basically it's a vlogging camera. It's a Sony uh, little flip LCD panel. It's quite dirty in the sense of you know I basically put my fingerprints all over it. Uh, zooms, zoom for days. Like yeah, this thing goes. Look at it. <laughs> the books are still a shambles. I haven't got around to it. Uh, Boris is. Boris is still Boris. <laughs> He's been doing it for another year. Uh, Skylanders, Skylanders. Picked up some brats. So my one of my daughters um, drew me a picture. So this is from Ava. <laughs> so she's drawn me an ice cream. So I'm not too sure if, what that means, but I don't know. Went to All You Can Eat Buffet on Friday night. So maybe that's what she's drawing. So we picked up some brat dolls, uh, Olivia and I, which is my other daughter. She's just turned 10. Uh, so we went and picked up some brat dolls for $50 each. So she chose out of her birthday money, she wanted to buy this one. I think I've got it listed for about $150. So when that sells, uh, all the money, um, I'll take the, I'll wear the fees, I'll wear the postage, all those different things. We'll go to her for that because I'm trying to get her into the mindset is that, you know, this is how you do wealth generation, you know, kind of looking at it from this perspective. Uh, I got these Brat Stoll Christmas around from very early 2000s. I'm not too sure it's a vintage, but we're going to say it's just vintage. Um, and also the purple one. The purple one's a bit rare, apparently. I'm not too sure it was a chase variant or otherwise. Um, I think I've got that one listed for about 200 and I've got that one listed for about 500 So definitely, definitely, definitely keep an eye out for Brat. Uh, some Hero Quest and board games. Board games uh, like this... Uh, I'd list on eBay, I suppose, from that perspective. The very big, big one down the bottom, I've listed on Facebook Marketplace for $100. I wouldn't have got much more on eBay for it, and it's massive. You could probably watch it go further back, all the way out the back of there. I've listed on Facebook Marketplace. Someone's coming around to pick it up this afternoon for $100, which is fantastic because I have to ship the bloody thing. <sighs> more Skylanders, more Amiibos, more everything else that's in a bucket that I don't particularly care about. More board games, board games, board games. Um, games, games, games. A skull. Um, <laughs> I didn't. I forgot to put it away when I was packing out the Halloween decorations, and some more Xbox games. Ones we spoke about last week. As to not to obviously just blindly follow people on YouTube, follow people in the Facebook groups and all those different things. Please do your research. I don't particularly care if you want to get into the Skylander niche. It's very. I want to say it's very condensed. It's very saturated. It's about four or five sellers that are quite big in the space, and out of that four or five sellers, I'm probably on the lower end of the Skylanders. I'm taking a different tactic in the sense that, that I'm using my other YouTube channel, which is, <laughs> it's a bit slow growing at the moment. I do need to get some microphones compatible with uh, the Xbox Series X to talk. Uh, currently, what it is, is basically me streaming it. So I have had some people watch those streams, thank you very much, and they purchased some Skylanders, which is also thank you very much. Um, and go from that perspective, what I've done um, in regards to the Skylanders as well, I test them with the stream. So basically the purpose of the stream is a bit twofold. Uh, it gives me a chance to play the games and have some downtime. And on the flip side, lets people know uh, what characters I've got so they can see them working, all those different things. And also if they send me a message on either eBay or through here or through the stream, say, hey, look, I want to buy this particular Skylander. Can you name it this? And what I did is actually named one of the octopus characters. I think it was Octo Buckler or Wash Octopus. I'm not too sure what it was. Uh, and the person that bought it, it was, thought it was fantastic. <laughs> so if you do want that, just put in the comments uh, when you buy it, if you're meant to rename it, especially if it's Swap Force, because that's one I'm primarily, primarily playing at the moment. Um, and we can go from that perspective. But like I'm saying is that just be very, very, very mindful if you are trying to get into a niche. I am finding a lot of people on on Facebook Marketplace, a lot of people on eBay and all these different things are trying to get into the Skyland niche. We'll just, you know, we'll blame me. <laughs> Everyone blames me for everything. Um, primarily because I talk about it because I've got it behind me and all these different things. And they don't have an idea, right? Uh, Skyland isn't quite easily broken, which I've said before, even though I store them like that. I know how to store them. Uh, the ones that you go on Facebook Marketplace, you go onto eBay, I can see them, they pop out straight to me if they're broken or otherwise, and people are charging or expecting to get four or five times the price in a bulk lot for what I actually charge individual pieces for, or for individual characters for, that aren't broken. So the people, you know, there'd be characters with heads missing and their wings ripped off and all these different things with bite marks, and 
they're not tested um, and all these different things and they're wanting top dollar for these things. So they're in for a rude awakening. Um, <laughs> so be very mindful. And also if you are selling on Facebook Marketplace as well, and I want to talk about this quickly, is that you can't charge eBay prices. And the reason for on that is because there's a there's a Latin law term, uh, especially in Australia, it's called caveat emptor, in the sense of saying buy beware. So if you buy something on Facebook Marketplace, you really have no recourse. If that seller sells you a Skylander, it doesn't necessarily work. I could meet you at a car park or I could meet you in a shopping center, sell you that Skylander for $500, disappear into the night if it doesn't work, and you've got no recourse, right? Unless I've basically said a few keywords, you know, which, like I said, that generally on the Facebook marketplace, people aren't, <laughs> aren't very legal savvy. You're out of luck, right? So I did see a lady on Facebook marketplace trying to sell a fire trap, which is one of the, the rarer ones you can only get in Australia. She wants $800, $900 for it. I'm currently selling that for $900, oh, sorry, $800 Australian on eBay. So I pay tax, I pay fees, I pay postage, I pay the insurance of that item going missing, like the lava lamp, I pay all these different things. So realistically, and plus the item itself, I paid $400 for. So you've got to take that into consideration. Um, you know, so I'm only walked away with $200 profit, or you know, $200 after tax and all these different things, right? So what it really comes down to is that this person's not paying fees, not paying postage, not giving any assurances, not giving any, you know, this, this will work and guaranteed from that perspective. For, for $900, realistically, <laughs> they're living in a fantasy world. So be very mindful of the fact is that if you are buying stuff from local, pay appropriate pricing because you don't have that assurances, you don't have that, you know, you're buying from from a, a nobody vendor for, for all intents and purposes, right? So that's probably the best way to put it. Uh, and having said that, I'll probably do flip my data next week. I might talk a little bit about the podcast. Um, I haven't had real. I've had a really good sales this week. It's just primarily been Skylanders, <laughs> uh, a few cameras, um, a few hot ticket items. I haven't checked the data today. Yesterday, I think it was around about thirteen hundred dollars profit this week. So it is trending upwards. Um, I have said before, I am basically buying big ticket items, and going back to what that ten dollar, fifty dollar argument I said at the start of the video. The more you start with, the more savvy you are, the quicker you'll grow. Don't take that in the sense of saying, hey, look, I need to take a loan out for $100,000 and $100,000 of stock. You don't have to do it, right? If I buy a camera for $50 or for $100, that camera I showed you a bit earlier, over wherever it is, that's a $100 camera, right? I've got currently listed on eBay for $600. Uh, I'm not expecting it to go for $600. I've got it listed high uh, for the simple fact is that if it sells, fantastic. Uh, I'll roll that into the Japan fund because apparently the kids want to go to Japan <laughs> collectively, not just one of them. So I might start that as a little challenge in the sense of saying, hey, look, can I turn $100 into a family Japan holiday and stuff like that perspective? But if I start with $10, I might be able to sell something for $30, for $40 and all these different things. So it's going to take that longer lead time to leap into bounds for all these different things. Do not recommend that you go out and take $100 of your last $100 in your account and you can't feed your family, all those different things. However, if you are quite savvy, you're wanting to take a punt, you've done the appropriate research, you know, if you're a, you know, a kid working at Macca's, you know, you've got no bills, you've got no expenses, uh, you've got nothing else going on, you, you've got $100 that's burning a hole in your pocket, I would suggest, you know, probably going out and doing some research, looking at something along lines of that, then flipping it for multiple hundreds of dollars opposed to just yeah, 10 into $30 or something like to that. But that's my perspective. Please do not <laughs> take it to the bank because the amount of times I've whinged and bitched about YouTubers that basically say, hey, look, pick up these books or hey, look, pick up these DVDs or hey, pick up these Skylanders because you'll make millions and millions and millions of dollars. That's not the case. Um, however, I think realistically from a business perspective, and this is primarily because I've been doing it for so long, I know what I'm doing. Um, generally, the probably the more comfortable mark would be that fifty to hundred dollars to start flipping that um, into multiples of hundred dollars or multiple of fifty dollars and all these different things. Um, but look at it from that perspective. Do your own research. I've said it before. You know, have someone else do the research for you. Uh, quite quickly, and I know I'm dribbling in this episode, and I probably will cut it out. I had someone reach out to me, called me lazy for having other people do the research in respect to the lava lamp. The reason why behind that, actually, the organisation I work for, the head of the organisation, like literally the head, um, Kate, it's a rotational position. When I was working over in Western Australia, someone came to me and he said to me, Josh, I don't need to know everything, I just need to know who to ask. 
So please take that away and run with that because that is the best advice I've ever been given and you can transcribe that to, to for business, right? Faculties to understand everything or to know everything. You just need to know who to ask. But having said that, I'll leave it up and we'll see you next time. Bye.